Okay, so uh, this is going to be a kind of review post-mortem of a session I ran on Friday for the uh, Contraria group. Um, this is the campaign with all like randomly generated characters, so they're funky. Um, some of them have incredibly low stats, some of them have really good stats. But, um, you know, there's a lot of Like, there's a lot of weirdness in this campaign. Um, s most of the players are newer. One of the players, this one of the players, this is the first time they've ever actually played. Um, and then also, one of the big things for this session was I had a player, or another another friend of mine, played as an antagonist, and that was a big. I'm, I'm not going to use the term mistake, but that was a big uh, learning experience for me. So, to give a brief overview, uh, this particular session, it started off with Glag and Helion getting like dreams from their gods, because the whole thing about this world is the gods are pretty absent. People just like tap into divine magic and just do it, like it's fine, but they're kind of weird about gods, um, so I planted some dreams. Glag seems to have a pretty direct connection with their god of comedy, or at least with a the arbiter of that god, so that's a whole thing. And then Helion got this really eldritch, destroyed, desolate future kind of dream. Um, so that was another thing. Um, I won't dwell on that too long. There was this really brief encounter with a harpy that was like, didn't even break down into initiative. They just like fought a harpy on horseback. It was pretty fun. Um, but then they found the, or then they got to the real encounter of this session, which was two of the five man group that they're pursuing. And this was because that other player of mine that was gonna join playing as an enemy he wanted to play like he i gave him brief descriptions of all five of those characters and he really gravitated towards one so um i let him play that character barking dog hold on all the animals are acting up See, like he's jumping up. The dogs. The dog. Yeah, tails in the way. Anyway, so he gravitated towards this character. So as a result, I had to whip up a stat block for him. And a lot of the time, especially lately, I don't use stat blocks. I just, I just kind of, like, because I know like what certain values, like what's a good amount of damage, what's a good hit to hit, these types of things. But I had to come up with a stat block for him to use. So that was more constraining to my normal uh, process. So this is the stat block I came up with. I intended this, this encounter, like these individually, these guys were considerably stronger than the individual player characters. Um, so like, man. AC is 16, 65 health, which I did end up increasing slightly, and that cat's typing. So I just gave him some basic stuff, con saves, wisdom saves, all that. I gave him a uh, weapon attack that did this much damage and fire damage and all sorts of stuff. Uh, I gave them like a mini fireball, which I actually reduced in damage slightly after, like, I reduced it from 3d6 to 2d6. Then I gave them just, like, you know, a cure wounds type thing, and this was probably too much healing, but they never actually used the action version. They only used the bonus action version, which this was also probably too much. Um, but that's something that if I was running it, I would have figured out right away and adjusted it, but it's a much different kind of experience when you give 
this stat block to another player to run and they don't have the same philosophy as you like they're just by his words he's just here to fuck shit up so that's all he really wanted to do so originally this encounter it's this tiefling flame cleric and a little kobold berserker with two axes that are uh, attack the party and originally like it was going to be something like the kobolds immune or resistant to fire and the uh, flame cleric is there like throwing around fire damaging the group while the kobold is like trying to clean up and blah 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 so then the party member the pcs have to figure out like okay do we try to kill the kobold first or do we go after the cleric first who's supporting the kobold and let the kobold just like get a bunch of attacks for free that kind of thing like you know um but then they mostly handled it okay except for the fact that they chose to just try to like they chose to move like they're pursuing this group so they chose like maximum speed on their horses which meant disadvantage on perception checks um so they came to this choke point and i gave them a few opportunities to figure out what was exactly going on and they chose not to slow down and look around they chose to just barrel through it full full steam ahead and as a result they got ambushed by the um the tiefling cleric they got a free turn to do something and so did the kobold so the kobold jumps down on the person in front who is for some reason he's like kind of the leader but he's also physically the weakest in the group he has the lowest constitution he has the lowest ac it's the like it's this little butterball rogue whose highest stat is a 16 intelligence everything else it like he's got a like a 14 dex and a 12 con he's just he has barely any health he has no ac so the kobold jumped down on the person in the front which was him so he landed two he landed two attacks and a one of which being a crit which almost put the rogue down instantaneously the rogue spent half of this combat unconscious and so then the combat starts it kind of go like they kind of there's not a whole lot to go over here like you know a few of the players went up and down here and there and then like the kobold kept getting some good slashes in the fighter kept getting some good bonks in you know all those types of things pretty simple and then eventually the kobold went down and i improvised an ability where every bit of elemental damage that he was involved in including the flame the fire damage he was immune to would explode out of him when he died to just like do some extra damage and then i also improvised an ability that after if the kobold dies the cleric is like kind of distraught and all of her fire damage gets ramped up um either one of those would have been fine but not both that was a mistake on my part but the players the pc still came out of it eventually i had to dial one or two things back like uh at the very end everyone was really tired and it was like really attrition based like because the the cleric kept using this cleansing fire attack on like centered on herself to blow up everyone around her recharging this uh, hellish rebuke clone um so she would have that every turn she's still damaging herself a little bit but then she's healing herself with healing cinder and it was just it was a lot of factors that again if i was controlling it i would have had i would have been like okay this is too much i'm going to tweak this this isn't going to work this way but because it's a stat block I gave to another player, it doesn't quite work as well. Like, there's uh, that kind of disconnect I can't plan very easily. So, that was an issue. Then, so then, like, at the end of this fight, I just, like, oh, your healing cinder doesn't work. Oh, someone, like, tried to get an attack and they missed. And it's like, you get advantage because it's fucking 1230 in the morning. <laughs> 
because it because I want to go home and go to sleep. That's why you get advantage. Not the smoothest, but the core of this combat could have been better. But also, one of the main things about this group is they're not super tactical. Like the druid has the bless spell on deck. They have it. They have it from Fey touched, and they didn't use it. The bless is amazing. Bless is like one of the best spells in the game. Everyone knows that, and they didn't use it. That's one one thing. Then, when they realized the tiefling cleric is constantly just centering a mini fireball on themselves, they didn't try to disperse. They just all stayed around her and just tried to punch her to death. Like, they didn't change tactics, they just stood there. So, that was a thing. Um, I pumped up her damage too much, as stated. Um, but it was it was close, it was just a little off, but the player still survived. Barely. Which I think is also notable. And then another big thing is this, this character was supposed to be at least, like, pretty thematic. Because this character is a cleric of the same god that Helion follows, this fire god of destruction. And they had a little bit of back and forth, but kind of, but not a whole lot. Not as much as I would have liked. So that I'm going to start the next session with a little bit of back and forth. This cleric is done. They've like their power is expended. They're dying so they can have a little like one last little interchange. But like that like didn't happen. The the that friend of mine like didn't really lean into that and then also I was trying to talk to the player beforehand to like really get instill like what their strategy is, who this character is, and they were just kind of unavailable, which you know, that's why it's it's hard to run like run like with certain type with certain guest characters that just want to show up, show up. So next time this pl this friend of mine is going to be an antagonist cuz I'm going to do that again. It was a really fun idea. But I'm going to have him be somebody else. I'm not going to have him be this, like, narrative character that would have some sort of interchange and dialogue or interaction and dialogue. So, you know, that's another lesson there. So definitely learned a few things from this, exactly how I tweak versus how, like, somebody else might run a character. Um, and then exactly how these players learned and kind of refused to, ch ch to change tactics and then it also taught me like I mean I already knew this but I don't really like nobody seems to like the dying rules for 5e exactly so I'm going to be implementing um, I'm definitely going to be implementing some homebrew measures on uh, the dying condition where like, you fall prone, but you can still do stuff. You roll death saves at the beginning of your turn. Like, well, I mean, I'm going to workshop this, but maybe, like, you can spend your entire turn to, like, get, maybe, like, get a small boost to your death saves. But if you don't, then you just make a death save as normal. Then you have some limited actions, like, say, like, in the normal game when you're up, for example, we have the classic drinking ponuses, ponuses? potions is a bonus action. Simple rule, right? Well, if you're prone, they're no longer a bonus action. And in fact, like object interaction is like your full action. So like if you're down, yeah, you could take out a potion from your bag, but that's your whole action. And you can't and drinking potions is also an action. So, like, if you have a potion, yeah, you could you could kind of assure that you'll get back up. But that's all you're going to do on that turn. And that gives you some little, that can give you some autonomy. But it's still, most of the time, potions aren't going to, like, you're probably just going to go back down again. But that does give you some autonomy, and it does make it a little easier, I think, theoretically. I might not use that exact rule, but something like it. But I definitely like the idea of you being able, being able to take some kind of action on your turn. Like, you can crawl. Maybe you can't attack. Maybe maybe you can perform certain kinds of spells. that Maybe spells that don't do damage. Or maybe if it's like 
thematic, like, you know, you're downed in a combat where your arch nemesis is there, maybe I'll let you take an attack then, for example. Or maybe you can spend an inspiration to do certain things. Um, or you could take some failed death saves. Like, you know, th like I'll, th I'm sure there's been hundreds and hundreds of homebrew rule sets for this. So I'll peruse some other ones and kind of figure out what I want to do there. But um, yeah, this session was intense for all the players and pretty informative for me. So yeah. Wait, where the fuck?